right, now let's focus on the horizontal issue. So, first up, the mystery component has been identified. It is that 42.5k resistor going to one leg of the they called horizontal speed. It's the horizontal hold control. So why is it mounted in here? I believe it is to uh, compensate for um, as the set warms up. I mean, this might be a special type of resistor that has a uh, certain temperature coefficient. In other words, as it gets warmer, the value changes. That's my best guess. I'll well, let's look on the parts list and see if they say anything specific about it. So this R three two eight. Yes, resistor 42.5K, temperature compensating. All right, and it, it checks within normal, uh, it, it's close to the right value, so I don't think that's an issue. So one thing I do want to try doing is putting these component values to match the schematic. I'm also going to check for continuity on the coils that are hard to see, but, well, I'll show you them on the schematic. I've adjusted them and they don't seem to do much of anything, but usually the effect they have is pretty subtle. That is the horizontal size and horizontal linearity. Those kind of fine-tune the flyback. They're usually in parallel with some windings. Like if you look at the horizontal size, it's in parallel with these tapped windings. You get the maximum efficiency out of a flyback. So you get the, the longest life and the, the best uh, high voltage out and so on. Um, you got to kind of tune everything and that's that's what those are about. It also helps you uh, get the best linearity and so on. Now, <laughs> flyback. What does it actually mean? Well, the horizontal drive signal, the signal going to the grid of the horizontal output tube, which powers a flyback, is a sawtooth. But that does not mean that the sawtooth, when it's a, the lowest level, the electron beam is here and then it travels across with the sawtooth. That's not quite how it works. It's a little bit more complicated than that. To increase the efficiency of the circuit, that flyback is actually... It's reclaiming the energy from the energized coil as the magnetic field collapses. So the energizing part, when the horizontal output tube is conducting, starts about in the middle of the screen. And that sawtooth is only responsible for that half of the travel. The other half is the magnetic field collapsing on the flyback and returning that energy to the circuit. So when you have issues on the left side, and that's usually where they are, it's to do with the damper circuit or something up with the flyback, like a shorted turn, or that those tuning coils, the horizontal linearity, the horizontal size, something up with that stuff. So that's what I'm going to focus on. There's not a whole lot to it. I've already tried swamp. I got the damper tube. but didn't do anything. But, uh, things like that, and these caps, they've been replaced, but I can double check them. As I say, there's not much to it. <laughs> um, and we've already gone over all this stuff, and none of it did anything. And there's also the horrible possibility that there's something wrong with the flyback. But, I don't really think that that's likely, because if there's a shorted turn, usually the effect is a bit more pronounced. Could also be an issue with the uh, uh, yoke. Um, but what I really think is happening is there's a little resonance in here somewhere. And that's what things like this are there to do, is to dampen uh, that out. You don't want anything to start ringing or resonating in here. And, uh, you know, this cracked board needs to be dealt with. I figured I would get some 
bits of uh, phenolic material and some epoxy. I could try just gluing that crack and clamping it, but I think it's going to be a little bit more reinforcing. I don't think that's really causing the problem now. This is a bit ugly, but it seems to be wired incorrectly. Um, just examining everything. I'm wondering if this might be a replacement flyback, which could be a potential source of problems too, because maybe it's not entirely compatible. Is this wiring? None of this looks factory. This is all too sloppy. And it doesn't have those uh, these red indicators on the, on the solder joints. I reviewed the service info and did some searching online about other GE 800 restoration projects and found out a few things. One, they used two types of flyback in the production. One is a laminated core, in other words like laminated pieces of iron built up, and the other is what they call a ceramic core, but I think they really mean a powdered iron uh, pressed type of core. I think this is iron core, but I'm not entirely sure. I'm also pretty sure it's a replacement. So the other thing I found out is, well, what replacements are suitable there were a number of companies that made replacement flybacks. You didn't have to go to GE and get a replacement. Uh, Merritt, Thord Arson, uh, there's a few others that names escape me right now that made replacements. Um, Stancor. Um, so the Stancor A-8130 and I think the Merritt HVO-7, something like that. Both are super common. In fact, I think this is one of the more common types uh, and I think I've got uh, at least one of them around here somewhere. I also have one salvaged from a GE 810, but I don't think it's quite compatible with this. Anyway, what I'm getting at is, I don't think I have much choice but to disassemble this and clean it up, clean up the wiring, and while I got this stuff out, I can test it with a ringer I can test both the yoke and the flyback. You can't test them in circuit. you got to disconnect all this stuff anyways to test it properly. Now if I'm doing that, I might as well take it out. And of course, I need to repair that crack. So, it stinks. It's not something that uh, you want to do if you can possibly avoid it because it's a little tough. i got to take apart this cage. Um, and there's very fine wires in here that I don't want to damage positive side, if I take all this out, I can really get in at that stuff I was having trouble with before. So while I did recap the stuff that's underneath here, I didn't do as neat or nice a job as I'd wanted to. And it'll give me a chance to test these two coils. The width and linearity, I've tested them for continuity, but I can barely even see them, let alone uh, uh, really examine them. Uh, closely so because those go right across the flyback windings so if they have a shorted turn that could cause problems if the flyback has a shorted turn it can cause a problem now obviously we know that like the flyback doesn't have an open primary because we're getting a high voltage we're getting horizontal deflection similarly the horizontal windings on the yoke can't be open because it's kind of working but a shorted turn out of the many 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 turns on the yoke and the flyback could possibly cause that problem. The other possibility is this is a replacement. I don't see a number on anywhere. Maybe it's not the best type of replacement and things aren't um, working in concert like they should. Uh, anyway, so that is what I plan on doing next. Huh. I thought that part number sounded familiar. Sure enough, I quickly found one in my stash. I don't remember where I got it. I mean, it's in a box, but that doesn't mean it's unused. 
it's nice to have all the hookup info with it. Because sometimes you have to do a little tinkering depending on what it's replacing. Because I would generally make one replacement flyback that would be compatible enough for a number of different makes and models. Here's the basic setup. So you see things like use if needed or depending on the type of damper or whether it's got a centering pot or with control and whatnot where to hook things up. Well, it does say replacement for all GE type sets, so that's promising. Now the question is, what is actually in this box? <laughs> Sometimes what you find in the box is the old one that was taken out or something different altogether. Or something that's damaged. Clearly this was opened as scotch tape on it. So who's to say this is really what's in there? Well, it does look exactly the same as what's in there, other than being cleaner. I mean, even the plate at the bottom is the same where the, uh, the holes are, the vent holes and the mounting holes. So that sure does look... That sure does look like the real deal. And notice on this, <laughs> I don't know if it's because they had trouble in the field, but it's reinforced so you don't get that cracking on the top. Uh, not only does it have some metal here and separate pieces, but they got these wood dowels across the top. So this type of damage can't happen because you can't pinch the sides in. Not crazy about having all this metal, though. But i got to assume they knew what they were doing when they made this. Now one thing that's a little different is this does not have... The two lugs across the top where they have that resistor-capacitor combo. So although it looks very similar, it's not quite... Well, as a bonus, we get a nice new high-voltage lead. I just wonder how old this is, because the high-voltage insulation on this wire looks thinner and nicer than the stuff that was originally in the set. But I can't imagine they made replacements like this, like after 1960 or so. Alright, so at least we have this in our back pocket as a, an option if we need to use it. Now these things don't grow on trees. I would really, really, really rather not have to use a new old stock flyback if I don't have to. So we're going to do everything we can to test this and, and figure out what the heck is going on before we try wiring this potential replacement in place. I posted about my problem to some online forums and uh, to the com community area of my uh, YouTube channel and I got comments asking about the sawtooth waveform that drives the grid of the horizontal output tube. And here it is again, we looked at it earlier. They were asking, is there a big dip, like, in here, which would cause the sweep to contract and you get a bright spot? No. I mean, there's a very, very, very slight bump there, but I don't think that's an issue, and the top uh, flattens out, but that is pretty much what they show here. All right, so I'm now looking at the cathode of the damper tube, which I looked at earlier, and it sure seemed to look like that. However, I was just looking again, and now it's looking like that, <laughs> which is not quite the same as that. So I wonder if that notch we're seeing here is where we get that fold on the screen. Now the damper tube option is a little bit different than, this, than the ramp driving it. That's easy enough to understand. You get a ramp of increasing voltage that will translate to more current through the yoke so the beam travels from left to right. The action of the damper is a bit more complicated. I'm not going to get into it right here, but the point is it's not really looking like it's supposed to. So, 
So let's see, is there another point we can safely check? Uh, so, <laughs> well, I got that 1300 volts. No, I don't want to blow my scope up. Um, that guy. Which might be a little awkward to get at because the linearity and that cap are on the top side of the chassis. But I'll try. So I wonder, as I've tried swapping out the damper too. Uh, the one I got in there now I don't think is the one that was in there before when I checked that waveform. So I'm going to swap that out again. And then I wonder if it's possible that the horizontal linearity coil has an issue. Or one of those caps does. Huh. Now that cathode of the damper tube goes to a bunch of other stuff. Including this coil, which does, which is the one that I have, I have to put the core all the way in for this to work right. So, you know, that, one thing I want to try with that too is just shorting it out. And the procedure for adjusting it, um, the procedure in the SAMS differs from the procedure in the riders. But one of them talks about shorting it out, which is not really an issue, I mean it's an inductor. Um, Generally, you can short those out in circuits like this. It's it's there to kind of provide a resonance help, I think, for the oscillator. Later reversions don't even have it at all. Uh, but it's this guy right here, so it's easy enough to jumper that out. Just wondering if there could be a shorted turn or something on that. Because that slug should not have to be driven all the way in like that. And remember when we adjusted, um, so there's two techniques to, to adjust this. One talks about shorting it out and doing it with controls on the set. The other one is to use a scope and look at the waveform at a certain point. When I adjust it so the waveform looks like it's supposed to, according to the service info, the horizontal lock does not work. That's been bugging me when I've been working on this set. So I'm thinking there's something wrong. Either I made a mistake, because that horizontal linearity and horizontal width or size coils are really hard to get at. So did I hook up one of these caps wrong? Or is there a problem with one of those? So we got four coils potentially. We've got the horizontal sweep. We've got the flywheel, I think they call it. We've got the linearity, we've got the size. I've checked the, all the mica caps, I've checked all the resistors, I've swapped tubes out. But anyways, let's uh, put the other damper tube back in and see if it makes any difference. Exactly the same problem with the other damper tube. So I'm going to recheck all my work and check for continuity and check voltages and uh, hopefully <laughs> figure out what the heck is going wrong with this. I checked all the connections around the damper tube. I swapped out the damper tube with the only other one I've got. Absolutely no impact whatsoever. Before I go taking the fly back out, um, I thought I would try it with the full size pitcher tube. So let's see what happens. Um, very frustrating for sure. Um, but one, one reason I want to do this is um, with the much larger screen, I'll be able to see more detail in the distortion. I'm also curious to see what kind of picture we can get out of this. Okay, so you can see now, it's not just that. There's one here and a fainter one there. I'm going to turn off my signal source for a moment so we can just see. Hmm, so kind of, that was weird. Kind of seems like an oscillation. <laughs> uh, 
bad. It's very sensitive. Oh, I mean, I've seen this before where screens are kind of sensitive to putting your hand on the front. Uh, well, that's a little weird. When I turn the brightness up all the way, the image gets larger and distorts a little bit. You know, the only thing I have not tested or swapped out or done anything with is the high voltage rectifier tube. Which may be a little weak so when I turn the brightness up all the way instead of getting brighter and brighter at the very end it just sort of goes eh. Um, what that can be a, a source of is actually the high voltage is actually going down which means the electron beam isn't traveling as fast which means it gets deflected more so the image actually grows. In other words, the, tr the, two, the CRT is trying to draw more current to produce a brighter image, but the high voltage supply can't handle it, and it, the voltage actually droops. Well, focus control seems to work. Let's see, it's horizontal hole. See, that's a weird thing, too. None of these controls do any. Nothing does anything. <laughs> uh, the width and linearity coils, I went from all of the slug all the way from one end to the other. No effect. Drive control, no effect. Horizontal oscillator control, no effect. Flywheel coil, no effect. Swapping out tubes, no effect. I even tested some of the new caps I put in there, no effect. The only problem I see anywhere is the voltage on the cathode of the damper tube it does not look like the waveform they indicate which is there and that's the boost voltage that goes eventually around to one side of the vertical output transformer and it goes to one of the elements on the CRT uh, G2 I believe pin 10 which normally is like 400 volts or so Hmm. I thought I'd give something else a little whirl. There was a conversation on the antique radio forum about any potential benefits of replacing a damper tube with a solid state rectifier. Um, it got me thinking, I can try that. Now, I can't pull the tube out because it's a series strung set and you need you have the continuity. I could replace the filament with a power resistor, but I just left it in. And I disconnected the cathode and I strung together three 5408 diodes. They can handle a thousand volts each, so I basically I made a 3000 volt diode with pretty good current handling capabilities. It was suggested in the forum to um, simulate the inefficiency of the tube by adding a series resistor, so I threw in a 10 ohm resistor. All right, let's see if that makes any difference. Hmm. Complete illumination of the entire screen. Oh, there we go. It's different, that's for sure. I was playing around with the permanent focus magnet that's on here. So that single bright light is gone. We have a little bit of ripple, so there's got to be some residual oscillation somewhere. But that, uh, that's interesting. Also weird that when I turn the brightness up, it's even worse now where it really blooms. It almost acts more like a focus control. I fired up the scope again with the solid state rectifiers in there. And again, uh, here's what we should be seeing on the cathode of the damper for model C and D. This is a model D. It's about 50 volts peak to peak, looking kind of like that. And here's what we got. 
which actually looks a bit more like the models A and B, but this is definitely a D. There's also clearly some ringing in there, but it looks closer to what it's supposed to look like than it did with the tube in there, although the amplitude is a bit high, I think. Or is it? Let's see, it's uh, 80 volts? Uh, yeah. Oh, it says 90. Okay, so it's not too far off. I also checked the boost voltage, and um, it looks to be pretty good too. It's within a few volts of what it's supposed to be. So, maybe it really is just that I have two weak damper tubes that test good on the tester, but maybe don't work so well on the set. So I ordered a new old stock one off of eBay. Um, when it arrives, I'll try it. Meanwhile, I'm going to put this set uh, back the way it was, take these diodes out. There's something else I was reading about these diodes is you should use fast recovery diodes because this thing is sh switching at about 16 kilohertz and I just used power silicon rectifiers which are probably not the most suitable for this so if I had the proper diodes that might actually work better uh, I'm not saying that's why we've got this oscillation in here but I'm just going by what I've read from some very experienced restorers online um, but I don't have any on hand I don't think so We'll just wait on that new tube. Uh, in the meantime, I guess I can go over everything again. So I got, I got one other thought about this is maybe the problem isn't with the flyback or the drive signal on the horizontal output tube or the damper tube. Maybe it's something to do with what the damper tube is connected to. Now this coil is nearly impossible to get at, but as best I could I checked it for continuity and it looks to be fine. I checked these caps on either side, they are fine, but this damper voltage goes to a number of other things, so one is it's the boost voltage for the vertical output. Now I was thinking, well maybe I didn't get this cap right. Well, it, pretty, it looks pretty <laughs> right as near as I can tell. Um, I've checked it again and again. Plus, I think if it was wrong, or hooked up wrong, or missing, that the vertical would have some major issues, and it seems to be okay. Uh, it's also going over through the 75k resistor to the ringing coil and all this stuff. And through 100k resistor, 0.01 microfarad filter cap, and it provides a G2 voltage, and I did check that and that's within a few volts of what it's supposed to be. And I think that's about it. But I can double check the wiring and make sure it's not brushing up against anything. So that's that point right here. And there's a 75k resistor, I already replaced that. Here's where it goes over. There's a 1.5k resistor going to the vertical output transformer. And a little hard to see, but uh, actually no, it's that guy. That is the filter cap going to the vertical output transformer. Hmm. So, and then uh, I believe that green wire coming off here is the one that eventually makes its way over to the CRT uh, via that 100k resistor. Hmm. I figured while I wait for the damper tube to show up, I might as well tackle this flyback I got to at some point anyways. So what I thought I'd be able to do was take this high voltage box apart. Uh, two of the screws were already missing, and I just took out the third. Sit that down there. There's three sheet metal screws come up from below, but it's not going anywhere. Well. Uh, and I don't think it's going to because of the stuff on the other side. So, uh, this was attached to it. I took that out through two screws there, but there's still some other stuff. I think there's a terminal strip. 
There are uh, horizontal and width linearity coils. I mean, something is still holding this thing on rock solid. Uh, so maybe it's not really worth trying to get it out. And that could explain why. And this plyback, which I'm pretty darn sure has been pulled at some point, there aren't the two mounting screws are now present on the other side. I was pretty certain just from a sloppy soldering job and the lack of the red indicating dots that it had been replaced. Which is, you know, my theory that it was replaced, they didn't quite use the right one, and it's got uh, some ringing going on, or it's just flat out got a shorted turn somewhere, although that seems unlikely. I think there'd be far more issues if there was a shorted turn, but hey, we're going to get it out anyways. So I got most of the connections out, I got to take these two screws out, got one wire to take out. See, when I got to this one, I figured, well, I'll try taking this box apart because that's going to be pretty tough to get at. Now maybe I can loosen this nut and rotate this assembly around. And uh, I believe there is at least one wire going way back in there. I don't know how the heck I'm going to get that out. Unless there's enough slack on the wire that when I take these two screws out I can pull this out of it. But almost there. I just cut this off. This wire is so friggin' brittle. It's got to get replaced anyways. It's just rock hard from all the years of all the heat. Pliable on this end, but this is just like ceramic. It's so hard. And it was corroded too, so. Uh, anyways. And there it finally is extricated. Pretty typical looking flyback from that era. After getting the screws out, just getting the wires, I, it still wouldn't budge, and I realized it's from the wax that had dripped down and stuck between the two metal surfaces. I was able to rotate this to get at that lug, and now I think maybe why this shield is still so firmly in place is that screw. I ended up repairing two broken leads on the replacement flyback. Powered it up, got nothing. Eventually I traced it down to a cold solder joint on one of the leads for the brightness control. Got that fixed. I then took the time to finally unmount the focus coil. These test CRTs have electrostatic autofocusing. They don't need this and in fact this focus coil kind of unfocuses it. So by getting it off we should finally get sharp focus on the test CRT. So, let's give this another go. With those original uh, thermistors and the filament circuit, this actually takes quite a while to warm up. Alright. Oh, hey. Nice. I thought I'd have to adjust the controls more than that. Just to put this in contrast a bit. He was getting away with it. So he was a murderer, and a murderer must not go free. All right. So as I suspected, without that focus coil being on there, we have much sharper focus. Uh, there's a little bit of vertical banding. I'll probably see it more if I go off channel. But nowhere near what it was with the other flyback. Now they mentioned in the service info that that variable capacitor drive control on the back that you should adjust it clockwise until you see the right band and then back off. So let's see if we can do that. So counter Clockwise, so it's getting a little bit more pronounced. Now I'll go clockwise. That thing is a pain to adjust. 
And yeah, it fades away. Nice. There's still some faint vertical banding. That's probably ringing somewhere. So this flyback doesn't have that tap where you attach the resistor and capacitor. Uh, but I can play around with it maybe so we can get rid of the ringing. Although what I really want to do is get that original, or at least the flyback that came with this site working. Because it tests good with an ICO 944 flyback tester. Man, finally. Right at the end of the tunnel. Uh, I was ready to give up on this set at more, on one, more than one occasion. Be interesting, be interesting to see uh, how good the picture is with the full size CRT. Won't be quite as sharp as this because the smaller the CRT, the sharper the image is going to be because all the details are, are smaller. And the uh, CRT that goes in this is not electrostatic focusing. Um, it has an ion trap magnet, so you got to fill around with all that stuff to get a good image. But this is some indication of what it'll look like. Since this was one of the more challenging sets I've worked on, I thought it would be worthwhile to review what all was done to this set. The first thing I did was recap it. A number of ways I could have gone about it. Since most of the original electrolytics, maybe all of them, uh, underneath were gone, I didn't see any point restuffing them or anything like that. So I just installed some terminal strips, put the bulk of them for the power supply down here. A few others I found convenient mounting points uh, throughout the chassis. Replace the selenium rectifiers that were up front with a couple diodes that are down here now. Another terminal strip for a few miscellaneous components up front. And replace the paper caps. Upon power up, a number of problems, uh, including weak uh, video and sound, eventually trace that down to a bad mica cap in the IF. So replace that. And for a long time, we had a bright vertical line and terrible vertical hold. The hold was eventually tracked down to a marginal 12AU7 video amp and a dirty ver vertical hold control. The video still didn't seem quite as good as it could be, or I should say the contrast control was a lot touchier than it seemed like it should be. Set doesn't have AGC, so I think you do need to adjust the contrast uh, somewhat regularly, but it seemed touchier than it should have, than I thought it should be. Eventually track that down to a resistor that was quite a bit off, hiding underneath one of these boards. And that was a big challenge with this project as well, is that these boards, these vertically mounted boards with components on both sides, make this really awkward to work on and to troubleshoot. Another puzzle was uh, there was a lug, a couple lugs that clearly had something on them that had the original red varnish dot and the leads were clipped off. Well, upon inspecting it inside the high voltage box, something had been replaced. I think the flyback, I think the doorknob high voltage capacitor. And I think when they replaced that capacitor, they changed the wiring. The way it's hooked up, there are two options on the schematic. One requires optional components and one does not. The optional components are in the dashed line. The way it's currently configured doesn't need those components. I think that's what was clipped out. The final thing to get rid of that bright vertical line was a new flyback. Spend more time than I should have on things that were not the problem especially vertical hold. I should have immediately inspected the vertical hold control. Uh, testing Mikey caps, you know, I found that one bad one fairly early on, which made me suspect the rest of them. I didn't find a single other bad Mikey cap in the whole set. There are quite a few of them, so... I did end up replacing a few of them. This, this is another thing that was a bit of a red herring, is this flywheel coil. 
I don't like the fact that the core is in all the way so that it's actually poking out the back. But the hold, the horizontal hold works really well now, so um, and I'll just leave it. Uh, also the drive um, trimmer cap was a bit damaged and had to repair that. So hopefully the final thing is patch up the original flyback, put a new old stock damper tube in there, reinstall uh, the flyback, and get that working, and I will call the chassis done. Then we can move on to polishing up the nice big light cabinet.